you and welcome to St. Bernadette's Missionary Discipleship Family. Today we celebrate the Ascension. The essential mission of the Catholic Communication Campaign is to contribute to the process of evangelization by fostering activities in relation to television, radio, internet, and other media. Please air five, wave, or smile to your neighbor. We ask that you please silence your phone and prepare your heart to celebrate the sacred liturgy. Jesus, who ascended to heaven, will return to gather his own. Our celebrant is Monsignor Ron. Please stand. Today we celebrate the great feast of the Ascension. God, through Jesus, completed his plan of salvation by the Ascension of Jesus into heaven. This feast is a reminder to us of the power of God, the power of God over heaven and earth. It's also a reminder of the great love that God has for us, especially shown in God's constant mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, ascended into heaven. You are Lord of heaven and earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, 
our Savior. Through your death and resurrection, you have overcome the power of sin and death. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, still powerfully with us in our everyday lives, strengthen us and console us this morning through your word and through the Eucharist. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, ascended this day to the heavens, may in spirit dwell already in heavenly realms, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons 
that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men, dressed in white garments, stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead 
and seating him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. And that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage, and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. As human beings, you and I have a tendency to worry. The nature of our worries may change with passage of time, but the reality is that all of us worry to one degree or another, whether it's about our own selves, family members, friends, violence in our society, financial security in a time of high inflation, global war, or even the threat of nuclear war. In all of these cases, we're really worried about the future. Because the future is something we don't know about. And we are scared by uncertainty. Especially the things in life that appear to be outside of our control. However, when all is said and done, worrying for the most part really doesn't make life any better. In fact, if worrying gets out of control in our lives, it can lead to physical problems, emotional problems, 
that can even cause distance between ourselves and God. And it most certainly takes the joy out of the present moment. is very important. We don't be seen as an antidote to worry, because it says to us, you can have confidence about the future. We heard a great passage from St. Paul in the Ephesians, where he asks that the Lord would enlighten the eyes of our minds so that we would see and know the great hope God has called us to. And so that we would experience the immeasurable scope of His power in us who believe. Now that is a really powerful message. And we already experience the great power of God when he raised Jesus from the dead and then brought him to his right hand in heaven. And Paul is saying to us in this passage, just as God did this for Jesus, God can do great things for us. And so there's something in our life, life as Christians, it's actually a great thing, something that can provide balance and perspective when we seem to be filled with worries. That great thing is simply the power of God at work in our world and at work in our own lives. This feast of the Ascension tells us that we believe in a God who is more powerful than the forces of evil. And while he may not magically take away our worries, he does care for us. He is our loving God, our Savior, and His presence, if we believe, if we open our minds and hearts, His presence can bring us comfort and security and inner peace. Jesus talked a lot about inner peace. He said it's a peace the world can never give you. It's a peace that remains with us no matter what is going on around us. And so each of us on this great feast, we might take a few moments today to reflect on where our own lives are at right now. Is there an area of my life where, for whatever reason, I am What is it doing to me? And let's ask the Lord to help us to carry that burden. And let's express our belief, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, next year, God will not only carry that burden from us, but there will come a time where He will remove it. Let us stand and profess our faith in our God. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
Father Pope Francis and all the bishops of the church, may they never tire of proclaiming the risen and ascended Lord as our hope for salvation and eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in our world and for an end to war and conflict among peoples and nations, may all people continue to open their hearts to those who serve in the armed forces. We pray to the Lord. For all who struggle with poor mental health and with addictions, may they find a source of healing and compassion within the Christian community. We pray to the Lord. For the Christian community throughout our world, may all who profess that faith in Jesus diligently labor in love until his promised and triumphant return. We pray to the Lord. For the 19 children and two adults that lost their lives in Uvalde, Texas, may the Lord give their families the strength to get there in this difficult time. We pray to the Lord. For De Deborah Will, Kevin and Margie Huff, for the dearly departed, especially for John Castellan, for whom this Mass is offered, may the Lord grant them mercy and forgiveness and full blessings in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Father, today we proclaim that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Of powerfully with us every day of our lives. Open our hearts to his presence this week, especially in those moments and times where, for whatever reason, we are challenged and governed <coughs> by life. He is Lord forever and ever. <coughs>
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realm. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as the acclaim. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving food and drank from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Myron our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the home of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may learn to be co heirs to eternal life. Happy Father. It's yours forever and ever.
the time today, I would like to have the young people receiving First Communion come forward first with their families to receive the Eucharist, and then everybody else can follow after that. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. I want to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant we pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father John Peter, congratulations and best wishes dinner will be June 12th at Brookside Country Club. Please call the office to reserve your seat. Deacon Ben cordially invites you to join him every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. for scripture study in the parish hall. The parish is seeking a parish administrator, a highly motivated individual to fulfill the parish administration position. This person is responsible for managing the business affairs of the church in a smooth, charitable, and efficient manner. Uh, the primary functions of the position include the office operations, facilities, liaison with the diocese, communications, and fiscal oversight. For more information on how to apply, please call the parish office. St. Bernadette's Vacation Bible School for K to fifth grade is underway. It will be on June 20th to 25th. Please scan the QR code or visit the parish website to register your child. Parent volunteer registrations are also available if you are interested. And the promise is it's going to be monumental. <laughs> And then finally, again, I would like to congratulate the young people who received the I would also like to congratulate the parents and family who had the desire and you took the time to pass on the faith to your children. And we are. Most grateful to you, also. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.